Hey everyone, I have a very exciting show for you today. We are gonna talk Fresno numbers. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, read my book, One Rental at a Time, you know I've been in the Fresno market for 20 years. And uh, I'm now bringing on an expert who's been in the market a long time and we're gonna talk about these numbers. Hopefully I can get him to do it every couple of weeks. We'll see how this goes and, and we'll bring him back. So let's please welcome Benny Clay to the show. How you doing, Benny? I'm doing great, Michael. Thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. I've been dying to get somebody willing to put together Fresno numbers so that we could talk about them as they roll out. So people will see, they can go back and, you know, look at past history and see that, hey, I'm just, we're just reacting to the numbers. So thank you for doing that. No problem. I, yeah, we uh, just started doing that actually. And we do doing every zip code as well, break it down per zip code, just not just Fresno and Clovis, but per zip code as well. And it's actually helpful when we're talking about talking to other clients or, or, you know, for investments, look at numbers as well. So it helps, I think, all the way around. Excellent. Well, before we dive into that, let's give you a chance to tell everybody who you are, what you do in the lovely area of Fresno, and just tell us a little bit more about Benny. Okay. Well, my name's Benny Clay. Uh, I've been a real estate agent now for about four, four and a half years. Uh, before that, uh, I worked for my grandfather, who's a local developer here. He owns a uh, thousand apartment units him and my uncles, and uh, I have my, co my general contractor's license. I've actually built 300 apartment units myself uh, wow. under them. So, uh, and I manage all their units and hiring and firing managers and leasing staff and the whole nine. Um, I was building uh, their last fourth and final phase of one of their projects, 65 units. Got my real estate license on the side started selling real estate and started making more money than they were paying me. So I was like, man, I think I need to go out on my own, try my <laughs> own thing, you know? And I said, you know, guys, I really appreciate everything you've taught me. You guys have basically given me a doctor's degree in real estate, Absolutely. you know, like they've taught me the right way, how to do things, the right way to invest, the right way to manage money. You know, very, they're very conservative. I learned a lot of great general life and business lessons from them. So without that, I would not be where I'm at today, 100%. Um, but anyway, I, 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 I decided after that, I went on my own. I, I started being a real estate agent. I started selling. I started being a top producer. I was working at Guarantee for a little bit, moved over to Iron Key. And then I, that's where I met Jason Pritchard, who you've had on your um, show quite a few times. We all know Jason, very sharp investor here in Fresno as well, like yourself. Um, and we, we got to talking and knowing each other. I got to list a couple of his properties and I, I've always intrigued about flipping because of my construction background. I wanted to get into that too. So we did a couple projects together and then we got to know each other and we said, well, let's start our own like a real estate group or our own real estate team. So we started and we hired, you know, Scott Farrow. He's worked with you a couple of times. He was our first hire and we started the Clayson group. Um, and we haven't looked back ever since we, uh, in the last 12 months, our production has been uh, 83 sales for 23 million. Wow. So we're looking to grow on, on that. And we've only been doing this for 18 months as a team. And we're looking to grow our team and, and grow the investment side and as well as the agent side with it. So it's just been fun, been having a good time. And um, now we're running these stats and, and here talking to you, man. I've always wanted to get on your show. I'm so, so excited and happy you invited me to be on here, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, there's a couple things I just want to make sure people realize before we get into the numbers. And we'll do this the first time so they get to know Benny, right? And sure. then when Benny comes back. Um, your background is probably exactly what a lot of the investors I speak with who are watch my channel want to talk to. Um, you know, again, it's hard to always, it's, it, it's an average. Most of the work, most of the people that follow my channel that are looking to invest in Fresno, um, want to buy that one rental at a time, but they're looking at, hey, do I buy a turnkey? Do I buy a fixer upper? Who can I call that maybe could have that general contractor's eye? Who could walk through it in three minutes and give a thumbs up or thumbs down? Um, you are one of those resources, given your background, that they should have in their Rolodex. So how would you like people to reach out to you? Is it phone? Is it email? How do you want that to happen? We'll do it again at the end, but let's hit that now also. You know, I, I don't mind giving my phone number out. You know, you call me on my cell phone phone number. It's uh, area code 559-940-0606. Again, that's 559-940-0606. Uh, you can also look me up on social media. That's just, you know, that's another good way with the Clayson Group or Benny Clay. You look me up. I'm all over social media. So it's very easy to get a hold of me there as well. That's awesome. And then you and Jason Pritchard, uh, dynamic duo, uh, two gentlemen, um, 
both young and going to be doing this for the next couple of decades. So it's going to be fun to watch you guys grow. Uh, to, it, to be compared or even in the same company of Jason is, is quite the honor. So thank you for saying that. I, I feel he is way above me. So uh, that, that's oh, no, nice, no, not nice to say. Close, but but, but, but we'll, we'll leave it at that. You're very, yeah. very, very uh, kind and generous when you say that. Very cool. I mean, well, let me share these stats because I think this is what people need to see. Uh, let me just bring it up. Hopefully you will see it here momentarily. Are you seeing sure. that? Yes, I am. Awesome. Let me close this so it doesn't block our screen. Um, so you want to set this up, why you guys started doing this uh, before we get into the actual data? You want to set it up at all? Ben? I would love to. Yeah, thank you for, thank you for that. Uh, when this whole pandemic hit, we were like, we want to be on the forefront of things and we want to you know, make sure that we know our market knowledge. So when we're talking to clients when it comes to even selling their home or representing them on the buyer or investments, because we do all the above, mm -hmm. that we want to be the experts in our field and know our statistics. So. I was like, guys, we got to start tracking the stats. Um, our brokerage was kind of doing it by month. I was like, we got to go a little more in depth. So we created uh, the Fresno Clovis because we mostly do just Fresno and Clovis. Um, so we created that market stat. And then we also created each uh, zip code individually. We didn't do all of them, but most of them, especially the ones that we invest in and we sell real estate in. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking to clients, we've already been using it in the last month of all a lot of clients we've talked to and like a lot of listing presentations um we're like here we even you know we go what's going on in the market because they're all curious because of yeah. what's going on we go like well here are the numbers you know at yeah. fresno and clovis overall here's what's going on and then mr and mrs seller or mr and mrs buyer even break it down a little bit further in your your specific zip code you're looking and here's what's going on because things change per zip code a little yeah. bit as well and here's what we're looking at and they go, wow, you got you guys really know your stuff, and it, you know, it. it, um, it I think it makes us really stand out, and it also helps us as real estate professionals understand what's going on in the industry. Yeah, and then I'm I'm sure you have a standard. I just don't know what it is. Is this like every Monday you pull it after the weekend? Are you pulling it every Friday before the weekend, or when is this? We're doing it monthly right now, just okay. to kind of get our feet wet to see how it turns out, and just the changes from month to month. Uh, we haven't really done it weekly yet we just we just again ran this out about 30 days ago so we're just now in the stages of testing it and what we need to do and then if we need to track it further we were the next goal is to go week by week yeah but right now we've got five agents that work underneath jason and i and we've assigned everybody four or five zip codes so they're entering the numbers we've created these spreadsheets and we're just kind of just looking at it, tracking it, and getting a feel for it, and then going to keep fine-tuning as time, time goes on. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just want to put it out there. I would love to see you guys do this weekly eventually. I've been pe beating up different Fresno firms to do this. You guys are the first to move on it. Um, you don't have to do all of the zip codes because it gets kind of, you know, there's just not enough transactions. But if you could get to the top 10 every probably every monday would be best right post weekend rush or even if it was tuesday right maybe maybe monday's follow up day but tuesdays i think i think that after 12 or 14 or 15 weeks is going to be you'll just find the gold it will not only help you sell to owner occupants but i guarantee you you will start to see hot pockets of where to invest months before anybody else does um, I agree with you 100% there. And I didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, it's um, fine. I, I agree with you 120%. And that's, that, again, another level because we do a lot of investments as well. As you, you've seen that. Yeah. And so we, we want to be on the forefront of the information. And again, like you said, seeing things happen before they come and getting a good feel for each zip code and where we can make changes. And if prices change, adjust our numbers based yeah. off that and all, all that stuff. You know what? That's, if we, that's if, what we're hoping for. We, I'm game to invest with you. If you guys really want to talk about getting a virtual assistant, somebody in a foreign country to do this every Tuesday, it's probably four hours of work. I'll even help fund half of it with you guys because I want the data as well. So if you want to talk about that off, I, this needs to become a weekly thing. Okay. Uh, but it doesn't have to be a high pint agent or you know someone in, in California. Um, you just have to give them, watch the data. But yeah, we could talk about that off hours. Because as people yeah. are about to see, the data is just so important. Make sense? Yeah, uh, makes sense. Absolutely. All right. So let's see the first. Let me hit page down because this is a PDF. Sure. All right. So you want to talk about April and March? Yes. So here's what we're seeing. Um, if you look at these stats, uh, as far as listings, so for sale, when you see for sale right there in the first column on the left in mm -hmm. April, Mm -hmm. uh, this is what's for sale in the, in, the, uh, in the month of April here in 2020, 941. Yep. Um, if you go to April of the 
year last year, there were 1,258 listings on the very right, yeah, right there. I see it. Yep. So that's a 25% decrease in the amount of homes listed in the Fresno and Clovis area from one year to the next. Yep. So if you look at that stat, that's pretty interesting. Um, if you look from March versus April, just in 2020. So if you go on the very left over there, you'll see that there was 911 listings in March of 2020 and now there's 941 which is up three and a half percent so when COVID hit in the middle of March that's when everybody panicked a lot of you saw a lot of listings go right off the market because everyone wasn't quite sure what was going on nobody knew how they felt about COVID-19 didn't have very much information on it so they were kind of panicking a little bit and did, didn't want to you know they didn't want to they want to understand what was going on first before they decided to put their house back on the market now as you've seen just a little bit after just a month Things are picking up just slightly as far as from March to April. Now, but from a year ago, things are down about 25% across the board. You go down to solds, we see that in uh, April this year, there were 400, 455 solds. And if yep. you go to last year, the same current month, it was 629. That's a 27.7% decrease in the amount of homes that were sold from one year ago in the same month. Mm -hmm. And then we also track pending. So that means things that go pending. They got a, a, a someone accepted an offer. The transaction hasn't sold yet, but somebody accepted an offer. Mm -hmm. That has changed about roughly the same percentages. Yeah. So you kind of see across the board, there's a little pattern there happening. Yeah, again, when I kind of break this down, and I, had, I did have the luxury of looking at this for a few minutes, but I wanted to just dive in with you. That first block for me says that we've kind of bottomed out kind of March and April, like this existing month. But when you look at year on year, the spring selling season um, has started slow, I guess is the, the best way to put oh, that. Absolutely. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's a okay. good, that's a good way of putting it. Okay. All right. So that's what that feels about right with what I'm experienced. Cause again, I look every day. Um, so yeah, and that makes sense to me. If I could add to that traditionally, cause I've been in the apartment business when it comes to leasing and I've mm -hmm. trained my leasing agents and then also now being a real estate agent and investor, typically the, the, the hot times of the year to sell and to lease is actually from the spring to the summer. Mm -hmm. So the spring and the summer are the two busiest months or busiest times that six month period, really those two quarters, the second, the third quarter are the hottest quarters for leasing for buying and selling, for moving in, in typically in the Fresno Clovis area. And yeah. we've seen a little slowdown in that this year due to COVID-19. Oh, for sure. Yeah. The big question both for, cause I own apartments and the houses selling houses is did the, did the spring selling season just move to what will become a summer selling season Is people rush to get stuff done or is it just gone and, and we'll see it next year. That's, that's the big question. And that's why that I is the big question. That's what everybody's asking, yeah. you know, and it's, you know, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't no. tell you what's going to happen, but we have noticed just personally in the last two weeks, things picking up, you know, quite a bit, people getting where they got to either move, or they got, they still got to do things. So mm -hmm. we know some activity picking up in the last two weeks. Yeah. So for me, the biggest question I have is who's going to move first. And what I mean by move is we clearly see for sale listings are down. And we see offers or pendings are basically flat, but down from last year. So my question is who comes back first? Do buyers rush out and thus dwarf supply? And thus the, the monthly numbers go from 2.1 to 1.6, right? Month of supply. Or right. does supply come out because now there's all these people unemployed and they have a little equity in their house and they want to get out soon or they have to move to Texas or whatever they have to do. That's, that is the big riddle. I don't know because it's not going to be even. Murphy's Law says that it's not going to be even. It's going to be one of those two things is going to dwarf the other. And that's why I think weekly data is so important. You might see it. I agree it, with you. Might I see agree with you. That is, that, that, that is the question, you know. And uh, we're seeing a lot of uptick in, in buyers right now because of the interest rates being low too. That's another factor. Exactly. Yeah. And so people that are still working have a job, but the interest rates are lower. They're either refinancing right now or they're going out to purchase because – Yeah you know, the interest rates are at historic lows right now. Oh, and getting lower. I can't even believe I'm saying that out loud. There's, I know there's a couple of friends of mine who are getting here 30 year mortgages with a two on it. Yeah, I, I just had a client that got 2.99. Yeah. 2.99. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's like crazy. 
Yeah, so that's yep. what, that's the big question. Why don't we fast forward and just look at what Jan? I think it's January and February you 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 built for us. Let me take a look. Yes, I did, and I believe that is the very next slide. Yep. So we can go oh, to that. January and December. Quick. January and December. Yep. Yeah, January December. Yeah. So this is what what this is. I actually asked him to do this, guys, because this is like two normal months. Because now we've just seen March and April, which were abnormal. I just wanted to baseline what normal months were. So why don't you tell us what you see here, Benny? So what I see here is in January this year, the amount of listings uh, are 866. Last year it was 1275. Mm -hmm. So it's down 32% as far as active listings. Um, as far as solds, solds are uh, pretty close to uh, even as far as there are 479 homes that sold in, in January. Uh, this year and 458, which is up 4.6% from the same time a year ago. Mm -hmm. And then pendings are up slightly as well. So what that tells me is, is that the amount of listings went down, but the amount of activity kind of stayed the same because it was low inventory mm -hmm. and we didn't, hadn't hit COVID yet. So we were still just, things were just selling still. Yeah. So that, that's what that's telling me. I see it the same way. Really what this is coming into this, because again, January to December or December to January, however else you want to say it. It was just another month of normal activity, no outside disruptions, no surprise interest rate hikes and, and prices were going up and yep. it was, it was predominantly, you know, gun to head, a supply problem, meaning we just didn't have enough supply to sell. There was, you know, demand, hence prices were going up. And thus when we, if I go back up to the previous slide, it's just exacerbated, right? Supply is still a problem and a bigger problem. So um, it is really going to be interesting to see what happens. Cause again, interest rates are below 3% for some folks. Yep. Um, I have seen, I, I just reported on it today, mortgage applications are up. Now a mortgage app doesn't mean approval. So you have to watch that. Right. But mortgage apps are up uh, three weeks in a row. Most importantly, they are 1.5% below last May. So if demand is anywhere close to what it was last year, we are about to see, oh, you were about to see month supply go under one. I mean, it's possible unless supply just comes back on. We, ha we have a supply problem and it's about to get really scary in my opinion. Yep. Yeah. So the other thing we did Good folks point. is I had Benny pull some numbers on certain zip codes that I like. Uh, one that you always hear me talk about on my channel is the Tower District. Uh, Benny, why don't you describe the Tower District? And because uh, people have heard me talk about it, why don't you do it from from your vantage point? Yeah, you know, Tower District is a very unique area of Fresno. Uh, it has a nice little strip of restaurants and bars and things to do that people really like. They're older homes, but they're cute, like townhouse-looking homes, uh, and it's it's pretty affordable to live over there. So that's, that's why people like to go over there because of, the, again, the restaurants that are there in the close proximity and the way those houses look and feel, it's like that old style forties, mm -hmm. fifties house yeah. that you're getting and it for a very good price point. So yeah. a lot of people are drawn over to that area for those couple reasons. Yeah. It's, it's, so that's why I feel like it's really popular. Yeah. I think, it, I think it's all of that and more. I think, I think they do have some very big, almost mansion-like, the old, you know, 4,000 square foot homes, which are cool. They do offer the smaller um, Cracker Jack houses. They, they just have, I call it character. Yes. Like there's, it's not a strip. Every house isn't the same. Frankly, every other house yeah. is different. And I love yeah. that. And mo most importantly to me, predominantly they're the older homes, but they're predominantly kept up. And if you can ever find a true junker, you know, buy it because, you know, the surrounding area will take care of it. Um, I've always had a guess, maybe you'll know, cause you're in the area. What would you say the owner occupant versus renter percentages? You can just use round numbers, you know, 60, 40, 70, 30, 50, 50, you know, what do you think the percent of owner versus renter is in that area for houses? Man, I'd have to guess it's 60, 40 owner versus yeah. renter. I would have guessed 70, 30, but I'd buy 60, 40. Yeah. I mean, it just depends, you know, I mean, I it's definitely heavier towards the owner side just yep. because of the character. Like you said, people like to live there because the restaurants, I would not even say it's, you know, you might be right. It might be closer to 70, 30, but it's, I would say it's in between those two somewhere. I think that's, I think that's exactly right. So again, when we look at April to March in the tower district, what are we seeing? So, um, so what so we're seeing is really, uh, 
kind of a, a, a unique trend. So from this time this year in April, there were 28 listings for sale. Mm. Uh, this time last year, there was only 17. Interesting. So there's an actually an uptick. So you can see how, why it's important to do zip codes just for that specific reason right there. It didn't follow the whole Fresno Clovis trend that's going on. It has its own unique feel because again, Michael's right. You know, the tower district is very unique in its own way. So this is why we do these zip codes is, is for this specific reason. You know, I, I, going on. I got another guess for you. Again, I haven't looked in the data in general, but I believe flippers have targeted the tower district because of the large margin. If you can find a total junker to total beautification, I'm going to guess. Oh God, I don't know what I want to guess. Five to 10 of those listings of the 28 are beautifully remodeled, dialed in fixed or completed projects I, I i would you probably be guessing right because as we're investors and we do some flips and and when we see something a tower that's a junker it's we basically know it's a home run right yeah exactly so 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 we go for those things you know um so you're you are right about that okay so solds are up too again people like the area it's it's up on last year even though april was an abnormal month yeah um first last year so that's really cool yep um, and then pendings and are down. Pendings are down just down because people, bit. yeah, they can't, nobody can go see them. Right. That's the problem. Right. right. Holding That's a problem. Holding a flip today is not fun because nobody could do a walkthrough, right? A video walkthrough of a dialed in flip is not as fun as actually walking through it. So uh, I, I agree. I feel for them. What else do we got here? Well, we got, you know, average days on market. You kind of take a look at in yep. April last year in the, in the tower district, it was, uh, you know, average days on market were 49 today. It's 31. So what that's telling me is that that's a very desired area. And again, because of the price point, the charm, the location of restaurants, that's yep. telling me that people want to go live that live over there right now yep. uh, for those specific reasons. And so when something comes on that is in pretty decent condition or fully flipped, like you're talking about with yep. all the nice, you know, upgrades that it has that people are jumping on it very quickly. Um, so that's another thing that it's telling me. And it's telling me that, you know, really right now, uh, in months of inventory has changed slightly in April. It was 2.3 months of supply. Now it's only 1.9. So the supply has kind of gone down just slightly. I think from, it's the uh, reverse. Year ago. Is that, isn't it the reverse? Isn't it's it reverse. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. you're right. It's so the reverse. I'm sorry. Two, I read that wrong. Yes. That's okay. It's 2.3. Yeah. And that makes sense. And again, this, this is directly related to COVID. Uh, there are finished products in the tower district. I promise you would be pending today or even closed if people could have gotten out because Fresno's shelter in place, right? People may yes. not know that Fresno was shelter in place. Yep. So uh, a lot of these finished products, uh, they'll be sold in, in May or June whenever Fresno opens up. But um, that's, that's why you've had a little bump there. Yeah. Uh, yep. But I love, I love the tower. Every property I have there, I'm keeping forever because I love. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, they're, 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 they're home runs. Like I said, you know, as an investor, when you get something in there, it's a home run. Yep. All right. So then we have 93711. Why don't you kind of talk about this in, in difference to uh, the tower district? So 93711 is, I would say, the um, older, bigger lots, very charming northwest side of Fresno, the high end side of Fresno, mm -hmm. um, one of those zip codes. Uh, yep. and, and there's Clovis Unified's got a little sliver in it, mostly Bullard High School, which is the you know big high school in the Fresno School District. Um, a lot of old money, um, the big, huge mansions off of Van Ness Boulevard. Mm -hmm. and the bluffs are in 93711. Yep. So it's a very desirable uh, zip code. And the diff the, why, why people like it over there, again, is because of the bigger lot. So that's mm -hmm. older, built, you know, using the 70s or 80s, um, bigger lots, and, and, and they like, they, people like that over there. Yeah. So yeah. go ahead. No, I was just going to say, the reason I wanted us to do 93711 um, is because it's kind of quote North Fresno, right? It's Yes. It's, it's frankly, if you were a Silicon Valley executive and you worked at Twitter and Twitter said you never had to come back to the office, you would likely look at 93711 or maybe 93730, but 30 is too small. Yeah. Um, so I thought we'd do North Fresno. Just be clear, folks, I own zero rentals in 93711. It's, it is bigger lots, bigger houses. Um, quote, unquote, that's where the rich live, uh, yes. simply said. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. 
you know, that's, that's, there's that's a golf course to nine, three, seven, 11, you yep. know, San Joaquin country club. A lot mm -hmm. of people like to live around there. Um, it's, 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 you know, the, the two big zip codes are 93711 and 93730 in Fresno. If you're, you know, looking to live in the, in the nice part of Fresno, really like the higher end, the, yeah. the, the middle, the high class, those are the two zip codes you want to, you, you typically look at. Yeah. So let's see what the high end's doing. Cause again, one of the things I've been putting out there, Benny, you've probably seen is I think the high end's in trouble. I think even the high end is in trouble in Fresno, right? Fresno's median is still about 260, 265, whatever it is, 270 maybe. Uh, I think anything sort of 600K and above is going to start sitting. And if we start doing these weekly, we're going to see if my prediction is right. Because maybe I'm not. Maybe 600K is okay in Fresno. Maybe it's everything above a million dollars. I don't know. But um, 93711 has plenty of houses above 600 grand. Yeah. And typically, you know, like you said, the when, when the market starts shifting or changing, um, the first market that gets affected is usually that higher end luxury market. That mm -hmm. usually that's typically what happens. Yeah, and this is interesting. When you look at the for sales March versus April, not a lot there. And the reason this is unlike the tower district where we saw a big change is this is an owner occupant market, right? Yes. This is not for you know ninety nine percent of the renters. They're not going to be there. Right. Um, so this is this is hey these are the upgrades. These might be some second homes. These might be people that hey I'm going to upgrade and go somewhere else. But in April and in March they're like nope shelter in place take it off. Um, you know, nobody's going to walk through my house and touch my stuff and give me this, you know, crazy health thing. So um, I think 93711 is, is really impacted from a listing perspective um, from COVID. So it's, it's interesting to look at. It is definitely. Yep. Yeah. Because last year was 117, right? Yeah. yeah. Last year was 117 and 83 this year. Yeah, so, so that's, that's down 29%. Oh, that's def. Yeah. See, because normally, right, the spring selling season. Yes. If your kid was graduating high school and going off to college and you wanted to downsize or whatever life event happens, you know, last April you were listing. Now you're like, no, wait, I might, I'm going to wait till this thing's over. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yep. So again, I think that's great data. Um, yeah. What do we got for price per square foot? Uh, so price same? per square foot uh, has stayed the same relatively from a year ago, but from month to month. So from March to this, to April, it's gone up 2.2%, just slightly from 181 to 185. And last year was 185. So as far as value, uh, it's still keeping its value. Yeah. Yeah. But something I might want to see, and if it's too hard to do this, no big deal, but, um, I, and maybe it's irrelevant, but something I just found myself asking myself is what is the average price per square foot of listings? Because this is sold. Right. Because I'd like to do listing because one of my early indicators is I believe price cuts are coming at the high end. And I think you're going to see that echoed in average price per square foot of listings. First. Well, here's what we could do. We, we can go down. I kind of have this here, kind of. Okay. So if you go down to the fourth column down, which is average price uh, for sale and sold. Okay. So the first number there is average active price, meaning what the what the Got it. average um, price change has uh, is yep. versus yep. the one underneath it is what they actually sold for. So what uh, I'm saying is okay, I here, see I see it. You see it? So yeah, no, so it's yeah, down. So so what you're talking about is correct. So we're seeing that what they're listing for it's selling for four from 4% down from March to, to, to now in April. And then from a year ago, it's down 14.5%, meaning yeah, that that's meaning what it right listed there. for, it's selling for 14.5% less than it was a year ago as far as, so that's what that means. So I kind of already have that built yeah. in. I don't have the exact numbers, but no, I have no, percentages in there no, for I you. Think, I think that's, that's, that's absolutely right. Keeping it how it is is fine. Because that's where you're going to, I think if we're doing this weekly, that's where you're going to see it show up first is yeah. it's in the active listings because what happens in a rollover, which I saw last time firsthand in 06 to 2011 is active listings had price drops. Yeah. Um, I just, I'm posting a video at 1.30 talking about a property that I bought in the tower district, the 728, that once sold for 200 that I bought for 41. Wow, um, good yeah, for you. Michael. Crazy That's stuff, great. right? That's so, awesome. Yeah. Um, so I put up the whole history of price drops and all of that. So very I, cool. I, I think that's an important thing. And if I was talking to buyers, Benny, that's the kind of stuff I would be talking about. Because um, we've got to figure out, are we exiting 
a seller's market in entering a buyer's market or does it still stay strong seller's market? If we go back to tower, my guess, strong assumption is we are going to be in a seller's market in tower. My guess in 711 is we were going to be in a buyer's market and we're really already seeing it in some of this early data, right? The buyer's market in 711 is legit and I think going to get worse. And, you know, you got a good point there. You know, the data doesn't lie. And so that, that's another reason why you and I are talking about this and, and letting everybody know, you know, that when you read, that's why we're doing the data. Data doesn't lie and it helps you navigate your way through things when you're, whatever you're trying to accomplish. Absolutely right, buddy. All right, now let's talk about where I am hunting and getting most of my deals, 93702. What would you call that? What would you, how would you frame that market or that zip code? Uh, that market is on uh, the west side of Fresno. Um, uh -huh. So I, I would describe it as um, not low income. I would describe it as a, Blue a, a, a very good investment market to invest in. Um, is, is there a name, Benny, for 702, like Lowell for 701 and Mayfair for 703? And does 702 have a quote unquote name? Nickname? You know, I don't think so. Does ah, it? good. I don't. I haven't heard of one. I thought maybe I was I don't just think missing so out. So either I was just gonna. I was. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, and I don't. I don't. I don't think so. Come on, guys. Let's create one for 702. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. That's a good question, though. I'm gonna have to do some research myself and and, and see if there if there is or not. But I, I don't recall off the top of my head. Yeah. All right. So let's see what we got here. So really, for sales, stayed pretty flat, kind of even. Yep. Um, solds took a big hit. Sold took a big hit. That's yeah. that's the key ticker there is 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 that sold took a big hit. So oh, I know why that is. So again, this is my strong suspicion. So seven hundred two is again a market that I'm very aggressive in. Um, but actually, I have cash. There's a lot of my competition who has hard money cash, which dried up in April overnight. Overnight, they just couldn't close. There were people in escrow to buy fixer uppers that don't have their own money that could not close because the, the hedge fund or whoever was doing their hard money said, no, thank you. So I think that's what happened to April this year that went to 15 is wow. not, not many people had cash, like had their own cash. Yeah. Um, did I buy anything in 702 last month? I think I bought, shit, I think I bought two of those. Good for you. Yeah, I think I bought two of those 15. Yeah, Scott and I sold one. We did a, a hotel there and made and, and, and on 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 Rayco and oh, nice. uh, did, did pretty good there on nine three seven zero two. I like that zip code too. I flipped one in there earlier this year before COVID nineteen, and Scott and I did that Rayco deal uh, during COVID and yep. and still got it sold. So yeah, I think you guys are doing. I think what you two are. I think that whole Clayson group is phenomenal people, and the two leaders are just outstanding. So nice job. What else have we got in 702? Let's see. Let's look. At so this. let's see. Average price uh, per square foot has uh, gone down 5% yep. in yep. the last month. Um, but from last year to this year, it went up point. Yeah. A buck. Yeah. A buck a foot. Yeah. Yeah. So a buck a foot went up a buck a foot. So that's kind of interesting. You're seeing a change going down. And from last month to this month, you'd think it'd be the opposite, but it's actually going down. So that's yeah. Again, I think that I think that's because there's a difference between cash and hard money cash, right? So the people who truly have cash are getting a bigger discount in April. That's just my right. guess. And then average days on market uh, has gone down as well from last year. Yeah, from last year. So that tells me things are even when they're selling, they're selling quicker. Um, because people who have cash are, are gobbling stuff up. I think that's what you can maybe attribute that to. Yeah. Then the last thing that jumps out of my mind is down but the very last row. Inventory last April was 1.1 month supply. Yep. It's you know roughly doubled. Yep. Right? 70 whatever 2%. That is interesting. That is very interesting. That is. That's you know, that's Seven, that, that is a very interesting stat. I actually wasn't even looking in 702 a year ago, at least not heavily. A year ago. It was all about 701 and 728. And then the low district just got stupid expensive and it's a pretty small footprint. That's when I switched to 702. I really like 702s and from an investment standpoint oh, for me, yeah. per, for us personally. Oh, totally agree. Yeah. So I think that's it. Uh, yeah. Any, any closing thoughts on all of this? It's been so much fun. No, I've had a great time and I, I, 
I think, you know, again, you know, we reiterate that data is very important. The data doesn't lie and it helps you kind of look at what's going on. Like, like we looked at overall the Fresno Clovis market overall, and then we were able to break down specific zip codes. You can just see from our examples, how it even changes from zip code to zip code. So being aware of that yeah. can help you make better financial decisions all the way around, you know? Yeah. And I think it's very clear. 93711 is very quickly, I think, going to enter a buyer's market. Right. We saw some early indications. I think 728 and 702 are still clearly sellers markets. Um, 728 has more inventory building because it has more dialed in projects, right? Done, yeah. done and empty. 702 is still that fixer upper, you know, blue collar area that, that Benny is going to get a name for. He has an action item. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to work on that, Michael, together. There, work on that there you together. Go. There you go. Uh, and then, yeah, let's talk about what it would take to get some, somebody to do this weekly. I think, I think it will benefit both our businesses. And, and if it costs us a couple of hundred bucks to pay someone to manually do it, let's, let's do it. I'm definitely game. So I'd love to talk to you about that. Very cool, man. Well, any closing thoughts? Why don't you give your phone number one more time so people can reach out to you? Sure. Again, my name is Benny Clay. I work for the Clayson Group at Iron Key Real Estate. And my phone number is 559-940-0606. Just give me a shout out. You, you can call me, text, uh, or even you know, look me up on social media. I'm really big on social media as well. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for doing this. A lot of fun. I look forward to doing this weekly. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all. You only said about eight, eight to 10 times. We'll, we'll work on it. <laughs>